Alema has manufactured steam-generated tubing for more than 50 years to the most demanding customer specifications. Only internally recycled materials and virgin alloy elements are used. The fully integrated production at Alema ensures full control of product properties from melting to finished product. Melting is done at 1,600 degrees Celsius in an electric arc furnace. In the argon oxygen decarburization vessel, carbon content is reduced to low levels. The chemical composition of the melt is closely monitored throughout the process to meet both Alema's and the customer's demanding standards and ensure consistency between the different melts. The melt is transferred to a ladle furnace for fine-tuning of temperature and composition. The material is then continuously cast. After pre-rolling, the billets are rolled to bar shape in Alema's modern and continuous production line. Bars then go through non-destructive testing, visual examination, and the micro-inclusion levels are checked and reported. To prepare extrusion billets, the bars are peel-turned, cut, and deep bored. The extrusion billets are heated to about 1,200 degrees Celsius and then lubricated internally as well as externally with glass powder. A mandrel is inserted into a hole in the billet. During extrusion, the billet is pressed out between the die and the mandrel, resulting in a seamless tube called a hollow. The hollow is used as the starting material for further processing. The hollows are straightened and pickled in acid to remove glass and metal oxides. After inspection, the hollows are ready for production to steam-generated tubes. The hollows are processed in Alema's state-of-the-art tube mill for manufacturing of steam-generated tubing. The mill has the capacity to produce steam-generated tubing to specific customer demands. The hollows pass through the pilger mill, followed by a thorough internal and external degreasing of the tubes. This removes any remaining pilger lubricants, which can adversely affect the tubes during the next stage of the process. Cleanliness is verified prior to bright annealing. To re-establish material structure after the cold pilgering operation, the tubes are heat-treated in a bright annealing furnace. The tubes are heated to more than 1,000 degrees Celsius in a protected atmosphere in a muffle furnace to prevent oxidation. The uniformity of the tube material temperature in the furnace is kept within only a few degrees Celsius for each lot being processed and then rapidly cooled. After straightening and belt grinding, non-destructive testing is performed of the full length of every tube. Prior to non-destructive testing, each individual tube is marked with a unique tube number, which is used to enable full traceability for each tube during the following operations. Each tube is inspected for defects using ultrasonics and eddy current testing methods set to discover tiny defects that the naked eye can't detect. The diameter and wall thickness of all the tubes are also measured and recorded along their entire length. Alloy identity checks and measurement of eddy current signal to noise ratio is performed on each tube. Most specifications require thermal treatment, which takes place in a vacuum furnace at a temperature of about 720 degrees Celsius for a 5 or 10 hour period. 
Thermal treatment is necessary to achieve a microstructure that resists stress corrosion cracking during service in the nuclear power plant. After thermal treatment, all tubes are subject to a buffing operation using Scotch-Brite. During this process, superficial scratches are removed from the outer surface of the tube without any metal loss and without affecting the tube dimension. All tubes are visually inspected and possible surface imperfections are removed. After visual inspection, samples are cut for destructive testing. The destructive testing stage includes flaring, hardness, tensile strength, microstructure properties, chemical composition, and surface roughness. The tests are made to ensure that the material meets the requirements of customer specifications. The straight tubes are U-bent for customer drawings. Ovality and wall filling are measured on the bends. Tubes with the smallest radii are normally subject to stress relieving. This operation is done in the same vacuum furnace and at the same temperature used in the thermal treatment operation. The bend radius, bend shape and tube leg length of all bend tubes is verified. A plastic sleeve with a label containing identification and other data related to the tube is attached to one of the legs of each tube. This ensures that traceability of each of the tubes is maintained. Tubes are cut to the correct length and tube ends are deburred. Most specifications require full-length, multi-frequency eddy current inspection of bent tubes prior to shipment. Alema have extensive experience of this testing method and it's done by pulling an eddy current bobbin probe while data from the tube is recorded. The data are then analysed by specially trained technicians to ensure they comply with customer specifications. These data are also included in the data package sent to the customer and are used as a reference during in-service inspection after installation at the nuclear power plant. The tubes are packaged in shipping boxes specially made to each specific customer requirements. The boxes are covered both internally and externally by moist barriers to avoid damage by the outside environment during transportation. The boxes are also marked with handling and identification instructions during transportation. Data from manufacturing, quality control and testing are compiled in data binders and in electronic form. The certificates are normally reviewed and approved by the customer prior to shipment. The boxes are shipped to the customer by truck or a combination of truck and sea transport. Transportation normally requires special arrangements and care due to the box's size and other requirements to make sure that the goods are not damaged during handling and transportation.